Riley, thanks for watching us tonight. Democratic primaries going on, Kentucky and Oregon. Here's what happened in the Commonwealth. Kentucky voters seem to be divided on the worthiness of Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. It's very close. No call yet. We may have it in this hour. Of course, we'll give it to you as soon as we do. Really doesn't matter, though. I hate to dampen the primaries. Both Kentucky and Oregon are proportional. So both Clinton and Sanders will pick up some delegates, but not enough to change anything. Hillary Clinton will be the nominee for the Democrats, barring an indictment in the email investigation. But Secretary Clinton must be annoyed that Sanders is still hanging around, with absolutely no chance of getting enough delegates to win. The continuing campaign drains Clinton's money and energy. While Trump sits in his tower tweeting, she's running around Paducah, promising. As they say in Brooklyn, oy vey. Now let's turn to what I believe is a very important story about press coverage of Donald Trump, and that is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. As you may know, the New York Times published a front-page article on Sunday with the headline, Crossing the Line, How Donald Trump Behaved with Women in Private. article is now in dispute. As one of the primary women interviewed says, her words were taken out of context, and that the reporters did not, did not accurately portray her interactions with Donald Trump. Both sides have been all over cable news. The situation is important to you, the American voter, because it signals that it will be very difficult for all of us to get the truth when Donald Trump is involved. The New York Times assigned reporters Michael Barbaro and Megan Tuhi to write the story. As Joe Concha reported on the website Mediaite, Mr. Barbaro has written a number of anti-Trump tweets, nothing egregious, just trivial pursuits. However, in an honest media operation, those tweets would have disqualified Mr. Barbaro from reporting on Donald Trump. Ms. Tui is another story. She's an excellent reporter with a great resume. She's accomplished much, including being nominated for a Pulitzer Prize. The problem is Megan Tui is a feminist, or so it seems. The factor asked Ms. Tui to appear this evening. She declined, no surprise. This is a tough forum. She and Mr. Barbaro did appear on other cable outlets friendly to liberal points of view. Now, the reason I even mention feminism in connection with reporting on Donald Trump is that his resume goes against that ideology. For example, Mr. Trump, as we all know, ran beauty contests. He referred to women as Trump girls and has been flamboyant in his interactions with the opposite sex. We asked Ms. Tui if she herself is a feminist, both on the phone and in writing. She declined to answer in both cases. But here's what she said about the Trump article yesterday. I think that there were um, some themes that emerged. There were, you know, the, some of the accounts with regards to unwelcome uh, romantic advances, this unending commentary on the female form, uh, this sort of shrewd exploitation of ambitious women. We can sit here and sort of analyze, um, you know, what we think of Donald Trump, but, you know, what we wanted to do with this piece was to really give the women their voices and what their experiences has been. And, you know, it's a complicated story. It is a complicated story, and one that needs to be examined by reporters with no agenda. Let's put it another way. Would you assign a person who escaped from Castro's Cuba to report on Bernie Sanders? Would that be fair? To put a person who obviously despises socialism in a position to gather information about the socialist senator? No, it would not be fair. So why then would an editor allow a feminist to report on Donald Trump? By the way, being a feminist can be a very good thing. That political position has led to many positive changes for American women. So there's no denigration in my analysis for you left-wing loons. It all comes back to being fair and giving you, the American voter, an unbiased look at the presidential candidates. The fundamental problem is, in the national media, there are very few non-liberal people even working there. Many journalism schools are crazy left, insane professors spewing all kinds of nonsense. Some of the students reject it, as I did at Boston University, but others fall under this way. And then if you get a job at the New York Times or other national media, you'd better toe the line, the liberal line. And if you don't, it's going to be very tough for you to advance because many editors are not holistic toward non-liberals, to use a PC term. Bernie Goldberg wrote a book about it called Bias, and he knows, having worked at CBS News for more than 20 years. But today, things are even worse. Things have reached critical mass. The New York Times and other national media are strongly anti-Trump. 
and they cannot discipline themselves to cover his campaign fairly. Talking Points told Mr. Trump himself this would happen. Finally, there was no question in 2008 and again in 2012 that the national media favored Barack Obama. No question about that. And yes, they hit McCain and Romney, but they didn't hit him with a vengeance, although the Times ran a poorly sourced story about McCain's private life that turned out to be an embarrassment to the paper when its own ombudsman criticized the report. But the Trump media thing will be much more personal than Romney-McCain, believe me. And it will get very nasty. And that's a memo. Next on the Rundown Legend. Continuing now with our lead story, can the national media cover Donald Trump with any fairness at all? Joining us from Washington, Bob Woodward, associate editor at the Washington Post. So first of all, am I making any mistakes in my analysis of the New York Times article, Mr. Woodward? Well, it's not a matter of mistakes. I think this is not one of the New York Times' best stories. Uh, I think they've done lots of really good stories. I think we're all better off that the New York Times uh, is in there uh, investigating and uh, analyzing and reporting on both of these candidates. As you know, it was the New York Times that really exposed Hillary Clinton's emails in a, a very significant way. So uh, at, at, at the same time, in, in terms of uh, the points you were making, the public is smarter than we think. They can read a story like the New York Times story, see the playback when one of the characters or a number of them comes forward and says, wait a minute, that isn't what I meant. Uh, my words were twisted. And uh, so in a, in a real way, uh, I think the public can smoke this out. See, I disagree. Uh, when, I don't think the public can. And it takes an oh, enormous amount can. of time to do that. You would have to read the article, then watch cable news, then figure out who the players were. But let's get to the specifics. All right, so sure. I, I raised two questions about the reporters. The first guy, Barbaro, tweeted anti-Trump stuff. You're an editor. You let that guy report on Trump? Well, I don't know exactly what it was. I know he's done some very good stories, as I say. Oh, just, this, just trust me on this. He tweeted, because we have yeah. the tweets. He yeah. tweeted what, what, some What did they snarky, say? Let's it be was specific. more snarky than, than, than anything else. But it was clear that he doesn't like Trump. Would you, as an editor, allow him to report on Trump? I, I would look at that, and if they were uh, inappropriate, of, of course you wouldn't want to. Right. Look, look, I mean, look, it's snarky. In... I just wanted to get your judgment. As I said, you're what? a legendary guy. The second <laughs> one is more problematic. She's a feminist. Trump is a beauty contestant purveyor. Do you let a feminist report on a beauty contestant person who's now turned politician? Well, of, of course, that's, that doesn't condemn somebody and, and say they can't report on X or Y. Uh, somebody is a conservative or a liberal. Uh, that doesn't mean they can't report. Uh, as we learn over the decades, the best reporters may have feelings and personal conclusions, and they can edit those and filter well, maybe so, those but things there were a out. Lot of emo there were a lot of charged words in that article. All right. Yeah, De I didn't Debased think it was, was one, one of, of their finest articles. If I'm an editor and, and I know there's a feminist woman in my newsroom who's brilliant, because I think this woman is an excellent reporter, I don't let her report on a guy like Trump because Trump is the antithesis of that. And so I don't want it. I don't want any margin of error here. There are plenty of reporters who could do the story. Do you, do you not see that? Uh, yeah, look, I, I really disagree. All uh, right. People, they're all kind of, they're feminists on the left and the right, as you know. And somebody can put their personal feelings and conclusions in their back pocket and keep them I there. guess it's possible. Th this story I, I clearly... haven't seen it much, but I guess it's possible. Okay, but, but it, it, it can happen, and the, the smartest, most careful, most experienced reporters uh, know that. Okay, but now, it wasn't the, done What in this you're case. on to, if, if I may say this, I think you're, there is an anti-Trump climate uh, in the news business, I think uh, there also is an anti-Hillary Clinton climate. Not in as the extensive, news. though, and not as personal. So let's well, get to you, the Washington Post, because you made headlines about a week ago with saying you're going to have a, a squad of guys and gals going out to look at Trump, and I'm sure you'll do the same with Hillary Clinton. Both candidates have a lot 
um, that people would like to know. So there were the articles. But I got to say, you know, I've read the Post editorials that Washington Post despises Donald Trump on the editorial page. They despise the man. So but it's, it's going to be very tough for you guys to be fair. Oh, well, well there's a, really a Chinese wall and the, the news... Uh, side really I mean I know these editors I work with them Bob Costa uh, at the Washington Post probably knows Trump and the Trump operation as well as anyone he can be tough but he's fair six weeks ago uh, Costa and I interviewed Trump and you know, this 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 guy Costa is 30 years old and he has absorbed so much he's he's tough-minded uh, but and, and this is the quality which I the think is often is missing. Old. Uh, no, uh, Bob Costa, reporter, is 30 years he's old. He's 30 years old. Well, he's a young guy. Look, he's a young guy, and he, he has this quality which I think is the core of good reporting. He knows how to listen. Do you think that the standards of journalism covering the White House are as stringent as they were when you? and your partner were doing Watergate, Bernstein. Are the standards um, as stringent now as they were then? Because I don't you, think You just so. can't make a, a blanket declaration. Sometimes people, listen, I've written books about Obama, and I've been very tough on him and said he is, really hasn't figured out how to work his will uh, as president. Lots of people have done tough things on uh, President Obama, and uh, do we need to do more? Do we need to, I mean, you know, the essence of this is patience, and uh, I liked in your commentary the word discipline. Right. Having the discipline to get something, check it, talk to more people, go back to the original sources and so forth, and in this New York Times story, uh, it, w it was one of these speeded up things, quite obviously, and uh, it, it, did, it didn't work. For it him, doesn't I'll tell look you what. very. It doesn't look very good. It and look and good. here's the Im important element in this. Real fast. What it does is it invites comparison between Trump and former President Bill Clinton, and we know in the case of Bill Clinton. Uh, he had a sexual relationship with a young intern in his White House. There are documented allegations of uh, actions by him toward women which were uh, coercive all right, or but we've bordered been through all on that. I don't think we re need oh, to no, relitigate uh, that. Well, but what I'm saying you, to you is this, and i got to go because it's a live show and we got elections and all that. Sure. You as an editor, the editors of the New York Times, the editors of any newspaper, have to assign reporters who are as unbiased as they can be. Have to. Thank you, Mr. Woodward. We appreciate it. Directly ahead, Donald Trump says he will use scorched earth in the debates against Hillary Clinton. We'll take a look at it.